Today I'm going to be testing two Lexus cars, namely the RCF and the utterly superb LFA, which really launched Lexus as a performance car maker, not just a luxurious car maker. And the car I'm sitting in now is the GSF, which is typically what people associate with Lexus as a refined, fast transport. It's got four doors. It's the kind of car that you'd expect to see in the carpool for a FTSE 100 company. The thing that sets the F range apart from their Lexus brethren is the fact they've been packed with racing DNA. And the F inside the title stands for Fuji Speedway, which is where Lexus developed and pioneered these performance models. But Fuji in Japan is quite a long way to fly. Goodwood's the next best place because it's one of the UK's fastest circuits. Now when Lexus decided to design and unleash their F range, they didn't step up to the crease gently and sort of throw out a few lesser models while they caught their breath and got up to speed as such. They waded up to the crease and literally smashed the ball out of the park. And this is the car they did it with, the LFA. The LFA is a thoroughbred supercar. There's no mistaking its sound. It's got this incredibly shrill note that comes out of the 4.8 litre V10 engine that is nothing short of sensational. It is the best engine of any road car that I've ever driven, the most hyper responsive to the throttle. And what it means is that the power output of this V10 is equivalent to most V12s, yet it is smaller in size than most V8s with the weight of a V6. Now I'm not going to lie, drifting in the LFA is something of a blood sport because this car was designed to be driven properly and fast around the track. It's got double link rear suspension, it's got anti-roll bar in the front and double wishbones at the front as well. So when you start driving it like an ape, like I'm trying to do now to make it look good for the cameras, it does snap back quite a bit. You get the initial slide going, now this is great. When it comes back, it can come back very, very quickly because the low profile tyres, the double wishbone suspension, the support that it's getting from the suspension makes it quite sharp. As you can tell, I do love this car, people have said it's the best sports car in the world and that is a tough benchmark to set in your first ever performance model. Did Lexus carry that through to the junior members of the ranks such as the RCF and the GSF? So this is the LFA's slightly more affordable baby brother, the RCF. Obviously, you don't get the same car, not exactly, but it's very much part of the F range. It's a thoroughbred sports car with very nimble handling and lots of very cool special features. Now, the RCF is smooth and subtle in a road setting, but on the track, it still carries some of the hallmarks of the technology that was developed to make the LFA. And one of the close things it has in common with that car is the normally aspirated V8 engine that provides 467 brake horsepower underneath the hood here, zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. The other thing I like about the RCF is, unlike the LFA, this car really is a bit more practical because you've got these three different modes from eco to sort of standard and track and sport plus. So 
You can scroll between different settings depending on what kind of mood you're in. Now my favorite button in this car is the, the traction control button. There's a famous motoring journalist by the name of Jeremy something or other found this too taxing and all you've got to do is press it for two seconds you go beyond expert mode and into the happy mode and the happy mode is traction control off so I think that gives it a fantastic draw because you've got stability when you want it you can still get crazy when you feel like it That's all very well taking these racing cars and throwing them around the track, but the car I came in this morning also has an F in its title. Let's see if that can live up to its name. So here I am back in the GSF, the car I came to work in, the family car, the everyday commuter machine. But if you look at the back, it does say F and under the hood, it's got exactly the same 5-litre V8 engine that's in the RCF. In fact, it's got exactly the same performance figures, pretty much, as the RCF, because it is basically the RCF with two extra doors. And if I put this car into Sport Plus mode and I turn off the traction control, I can have just as much fun, if not more, with this car. It weighs all of 70 kilos more than the RCF, but you can still give it some proper hammer. So basically this is a car that you can share the sport with your friends, you can terrify your family and work colleagues, you can really impress them on your way home with your prowess at the helm of a very, very drivable, sporty, everyday car. And really the only difference between this car and the RCF is proper space in the back and two more doors at a cost of 70 kilograms, well worth it. So if there'd been any doubt about the integrity or the continuum of performance throughout the F range, I think that's been completely blown away today. But I expected the LFA and I expected the RCF to be brutes on the track. But the GSF has really surprised me today because despite having four doors and being a little bit heavier, it actually handles incredibly well and it's a visceral experience when you drive it. If you want to see these great cars in action live, come and see them at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. <laughs> about 560 horsepower and it'll get you to 60 miles per hour from zero in a hair over three seconds so it's pretty impressive with a top speed of 200 which I don't think I'll be experiencing today on these tight lanes this just feels